Hello, during that demonstration, we're going to show you an ACI multi-site, meaning two ACI fabrics interconnected back to back with VPC. And then we're going to have an ASA cluster that is stretched across the two ACI fabrics. So let me first start with uh, the physical topology of uh, our, our uh, scenario. So you have data center one where we have an ASA an a, uh, ACI fabric one. We have a data center two, we have a second uh, ACI fabric. Those two fabrics are interconnected back to back with dark fibers or DWDM using a back to back VPC. We could have to use it in you know, OTV or VXLAN for that connection. From an ASA cluster perspective, we have two members of the cluster into site one connected with VPC, and you have two members of the cluster into site two, also connected with VPC. And I'll demonstrate that all four of those ASAs, they are part of a single ASA cluster. We also have uh, edge routers, WAN edge routers in data center two, WAN edge routers into data center one, and then we have a simulated uh, uh, WAN topology. So let me go ahead and get started. Let me first start with now moving towards the logical view. So first, let me start with the ASA cluster. So said there are two devices, two uh, ASA devices into site one, two ASA devices, two ASA firewalls in site two. The first thing that we need to do for those devices to be in the same clusters is make sure that the CCL, the cluster control link is actually extended, logically extended between the two data centers. And the way we have done that is each ASA is connected. Uh, the diagram here has a single line, but in reality, it's a VPC uh, into site one, uh, uh, from which ASA is a VPC to two leaf switches. And then what we did is on the a, uh, ACI fabric, we created uh, EPG, and then that EPG is mapped to the ports where the, uh, uh, the CCL links from the ASA connect to, as well as that EPG is extended between the two sites. Let me go ahead and, and, and demonstrate that. So if I would come here uh, into the uh, ACI uh, uh, fabric, let me uh, uh, bring up the, uh, uh, the APIC. So 215, that's the APIC in data center one. We did that under tenant 14. We have an application network profile called app 20 and an EPG called failover. And then the static binding here demonstrates that we have them, the static binding of that EPG towards the ports of the ASA1, ASA2, this is data center one, as well as towards the, uh, the DCI, the data center interconnect link. We've done exactly the same uh, into data center two, uh, static binding towards the ASA1, ASA2, and towards the DCI. So if that is working, what I should be able to do here is to come into the master ASA and then do a show cluster info, which will then show you that all those devices are uh, actually in the same cluster. So if you see here, uh, we see that we, we have the master and then you have all three uh, uh, slaves. Uh, in our uh, 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 test topology, the ASA uh, cluster is configured in an individual interface, multi-context routed mode. So it's, uh, and I'll show you how it established the routing adjacent with uh, uh, the fabric. Let me go back here to the topology diagram. So as I said, the ASAs are configured into uh, individual multi-context routed mode which means that the two ASAs into data center one and the two ASAs in data center two, they, they have here towards their outside interface, the same subnet, 192.14.20, but that subnet is not extended between the sites. So although uh, they are in the same subnet here, uh, means that the unit one and two uh, they're going to be peering via SPF 
with the C router in data center one. And then units three and four, they're gonna be peering via OSPF with the router in data center two, but they don't peer uh, 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 across. And that's an important point because, which means that all the traffic coming from the data center, going through the firewalls to the WAM, will be localized to data center one, if that traffic is coming from data center one, and if it's coming from data center two, will be localized to, uh, 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 to data center two. So let me go back here into the lab, go here into the master, and at that point, I will change the context for 10 and 14. So once we change here to the context of uh, 10 and 14, I can execute a command that uh, cluster exec that will, will, sh will execute the command on all four neighbors of, of four members of the cluster at the same time. So as you can see here, all first unit and the second unit, which are in data center one, they have the peering towards 192 with 192.14.1 as well uh, between themselves, 101 and 102, exactly as it was in the diagram. And uh, the units in data center two, so those two units in data center two, they have the peering with the C router uh, dot two that's located in data center two, okay, as well as between themselves. Now, the ASA is also configured to uh, have a neighborship and OS run OSPF towards the fabric. So, and again, in the ASA inside interface of data center one, the two ASAs, they will peer with the fabric one. So, dot one, dot 11, dot 12, and the ASAs in data center two will peer the fabric dot with which is the dot 13 and dot 14. So uh, uh, if I would come back here, you see exactly that, that the ASA into in, in, in fabric uh, uh, one, connected to fabric one is peering with 11 and 12 in addition to the other ASA. Uh, and you see here, uh, uh, 11, 12, 11, 12. And then the ASA is in data center two, they appearing with the fabric IP uh, uh, 13 and 14 into the fabric side. So this quickly demonstrates to you that uh, 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 the ASA is how, how this is actually uh, uh, configured. Now let me go ahead and start showing what some of the benefits of that design. So first <coughs> we have a subnet here that's 10.100 14.0, that's a subnet that only exists inside site number one. So the goal here is to demonstrate to you that because that subnet only exists in site one, it will come in and out of the WAN via site one and via the firewalls in data center one. We also have a second subnet, 10.200, that only exists into data center two and that one uh, comes in and out of data center uh, uh, two. So let me go here into uh, uh, the ASA first, and then we're gonna work through uh, uh, the, the, the packet walk of towards 10.100, uh, uh, trying to communicate with the WAN uh, subnet with 192.14.99, uh, uh, and because it's from a subnet that only exists in data center one, one, then these subnets advertised via OSPF from the fabric to the ASA, from the ASA to the uh, edge router, and then towards the WAN. So we have a localization here, uh, uh, and the same would be true for data center two for the 10.200. Uh, uh, so let me go here into uh, uh, the ASA. And uh, if I go into the ASA, and then I run uh, a command to look for that 10.100 subnet, what you see here is that uh, the ASA uh, 
firewalls in data center one to get to 10.100 it's load balancing towards 11 towards 12 and 11 which are the two border leaves of uh, uh, fabric one so you see here from the firewall perspective goes by the inside interface and then next hop dot 11 and 12 showing that traffic coming from the WAN gets to the ASA will be sent towards the fabric one border leaf devices the same is true for uh, the ASAs into data center 2 if they do get a packet for 10.100 they will also send to the border leaves in this case the border leaves of fabric 2 fabric 2 then has a, a peering with fabric 1 and then it would be uh, basically a transit uh, towards the 10.100 that exists into data center uh, uh, 1 if I would go here into the CE router of data center 1 and I run the same command show uh, IP OSP, show IP route to that VRF to the 10.100 you see here that we go via the firewall 192.14.20.101 and 102 and if I go here into the WAN router uh, to of uh, the, the WAN router and I go here do a show IP route to 10.100 you see here that the next hop is 10.14.10.1 which is uh, uh, the C router in data center uh, uh, one, one. So what that demonstrates is that with this design, any traffic that's coming from the WAN router, going to the fabric, going to the 10.100, is coming into the right, into the left data center, which is the correct data center that owns that particular subnet. What I also would like to show you is that the return of the traffic is also following the most optimal path so if I would go into uh, uh, the fabric if we go back here into the lab and and then look at the the ACI fabric uh, routing table and you can do so through tenant tenant 14 in this particular example look at networking uh, routed networks this is uh, uh, this is the layer three out that we are utilizing, and then uh, we can come here, look at one of the two border leaves. Speak up border leaf two. Then that's the OSPF adjacency uh, that goes towards the firewall, and then if I look at routes, and then uh, if I'm looking for the one ninety two fourteen ninety nine, you can see that. Uh, actually, I'm here into data center two. Let me go back here into the AP in data center one. Uh, uh, the AP in data center one will show us that if I go into the layer three out, into uh, we can pick one of the nodes, pick node two, look at the OSPF routes, and then what we're gonna see is that. Uh, if I look here for the 192.14.99, the next hop is the uh, 192.14.31, 101, and 102, which are the firewalls in data center one. So, and then from the uh, 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 from the firewalls in data center one, if I would look for uh, uh, the route to get to 192.14.99 then what you see here is that uh, if I go here into the uh, uh, into the into into the, the master and run the command cluster exact show route 192.14.99 that is the the one uh, uh, towards the, the the WAN prefix you see that I'm going towards the CE in data center one from into firewall that are located in data center one and then for the firewalls that are located in data center two they go via the CE in data center two so again demonstrating that the design is optimized 
for the traffic coming from that subnet to also to leave locally here via uh, data center one. And the same would be true for uh, uh, the 10 200 regarding you know, preferring uh, entering and coming out into, into data center two. So if that's correct, what we can sh show you is because we actually have some traffic running from the WAN towards the 10.100 uh, subnet that I can come here into the firewall. If I would show connections, show the connections going to uh, 10.100, you see that the firewalls that own all of the connections for the 10.100 are those two firewalls here that belong that are physically located in data center one. Uh, and then the firewalls in data center two, they are the backup, you know, for, for, for that connection. And the same would be true, but in the opposite direction that if I would run, you know, uh, uh, towards the 10.200, you see that, you know, the firewalls in data center one are in backup mode. That's what that is why it's representing. And then the firewalls in data center two, they uh, own the 10, the connections for uh, the 10, 200. Uh, the other uh, a scenario here is the fact that you could have the, you, you, you could have the subnet and you most likely will have a subnet. That's uh, one of the, the benefits here of the dual fabric design, like the 10.1.4, that's a subnet that's stretched between the two fabrics, between the two data centers. Uh, uh, ACI fabric into the 1.2 release allows that subnet to have active, active default gateways uh, into the fabric, which means that in that case, traffic could uh, uh, come in and out of both data centers. And that's one of the values that they uh, having an ASA cluster stretched across both data centers means that we eliminate the problems about you know traffic uh, uh, th that you know the traffic trying to leave uh, go to a firewall on the right but uh, uh, has entered you know the firewall on the left that is all taken care uh, for you by the ASA cluster so <clears throat> if I would now we, we have on that subnet 10.1.4 we have some hosts into data center one, some hosts in data center two. And you can, we, you can see that if I would look for uh, uh, the connections, again, uh, uh, if I would check the connections, but now looking for the connections for 10.1.4, you see here that because that's a, a stretched subnet, we have, for example, the, the, the 10, 1.4.100 um, that it's a the backup it's here the 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 10.1.4 uh, 110 11 12 and 13 are located in data center 2 so you see that it's the connection is owned by that uh, firewall that's located in data center 2 while the 10.1.4 uh, 100 uh, and 101, 2, as, uh, uh, all the way up to the 5, are actually owned by the, the fires in data center 1. So 10, 1, 4, 100, uh, 101, that would be uh, uh, here, and then 102, 103, 104, and 105, they are located into data center 1, so you see here that the connection is zoned by the firewall in data center one. And, and th that flag here dash means that the connection is actually owned by, by that device. So uh, hopefully that demonstrates to you uh, a validated design where we have an ASA cluster that is stretched across two sites and then you have an ACI fabric on each data center and interconnected. And then the ASA is uh, active active uh, on both sides through the, the usage of an ASA cluster. So thanks for watching.